Well, welcome everybody to this uh, special edition of Pictionary Tuesday. Friday Tuesday edition. <laughs> Friday Tuesday edition, there you go. And of course, I'm Daryl, and uh, if you're joining us for the first time because of the, uh, the special event we have today, I want to say welcome. Uh, typically, every Friday at 3 o'clock Central, we don't always have the wonderful Phil Vizier, but you have me or the, uh, the wonderful Courtney, and uh, we have a good time. We talk about products that we believe in, and then we play some Pictionary. And today, it is my honor and pleasure to be joined by Phil Vischer, who needs no introduction. I had a, a written introduction I was going to read. No. I left it down in the room. Good. But you guys know Phil. I mean, he is the creator of VeggieTales, and he's going to talk about that a little bit, and his new project, which is called What's in the Bible. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, taking just a few minutes to talk with Phil and kind of get to know him a little bit and uh, what's going on with his projects. And then he has so wonderfully and graciously agreed to uh, play Pictionary for us. And I'm a little nervous about that because that means that in the future I have to live up to his drawing standard. I don't draw all that well, other than vegetables. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So all the stuff today will be vegetables. Is that right, Courtney? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> a vegetable. Vegetables. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. So the first thing I want to ask you, I mean, the last 10 years have been quite a journey for you. And Yes. Um, what, what would you say through that process that, that God has taught you and brought you through and, and you know, what has God taught you over the last 10 years? A lot. <laughs> um, really what I, what I had done, uh, I was extremely ambitious with VeggieTales. I wanted to do as much good as I, can, I could as fast as I could. You know, I wanted to be the next Walt Disney. I wanted to build the next Disney. I wanted to save the children of the world from the evils of Hollywood. And I was killing myself. You know, I was working myself to death. It was affecting my marriage. It was affecting my family. It was affecting my employees. I was miserable. Um, but I thought that's what God wanted because he wants us to do as much as we can, as fast as we can, right? right. And I realized, you know, it all fell apart. I mean, I lost Big Idea Productions in, in 2003 in bankruptcy. And in the, the months after that of just praying and saying, okay, God, why? You know, why did you let that happen? I realized that I had made the work I was doing for God more important to me than my relationship with God. And as a result, I wasn't enjoying, you know, the, the fruit of my faith. You know, joy, peace, love, kindness, faithfulness, you know, long suffering. I mean, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is, is why Christians are attractive to the rest of the world. And I was anxious, I was tired, I was cranky, I was stressed, you know, and I'm, I'm reading Paul's epistle one night saying, well, none of those are on the list. You know, why do I have all these things that aren't on the list and I don't have the things that are on the list? And that's really when God started to work on me and say, you know what? I didn't let your dream fall apart because I didn't love you. I let it fall apart because I love you so much and I want to save you from yourself. And that led me, you know, to really slowing down and saying, okay, you know what? I'm not supposed to focus on results. I'm not supposed to focus on impact. I'm supposed to focus on obedience saying, okay, God, what do you have for me to do today, and am I doing it? And that can be as simple as how I treat the girl who's bagging my groceries at the grocery store, you know, as well as, you know, my big life-changing ministry that I'm trying to build. But I had to let go of it. You know, I had to let go of the notion of, here's what I want to do for you, God, and just say, you know what? I'm called to be with you, God, to be with you and, and to be perfectly happy just in that. And then out of that relationship will come the work you want me to do. But if I put the work before the relationship, you know, I'm already on the wrong path. And I'm going to be stressed, I'm going to be anxious, I'm going to be tired, and I'm going to collapse. So that's really what I learned, which came back to, okay, God, then what do you want me to do? And that's is that your next question? That's where what, What's in the Bible came about. So what is What's in the Bible? <laughs> what's in the Bible is, um, in a nutshell... <laughs> an effort to re-evangelize the North American church. 50% okay. uh, of adult Protestants can't define the word grace, which was rather central to the Protestant Reformation. Yeah. You know, and so you ask, well, how on earth are we supposed to be living out God's grace before the eyes of a watching world if we can't even define the term? We're losing a generation of kids. You know, they've grown up in a church for the last 30 years that seems primarily focused on who should we vote for and what issues should we be really cranky about? 
And as a result, 80% of North Americans have a negative view. Non-Christians in North America, 80% have a negative view of Christianity today. Uh, when people th between the ages of 18 and 35 were asked, when you hear the phrase evangelical Christian, what's the first word that pops into your mind? The number one answer was homophobic. Mm -hmm. So we have allowed ourselves to be defined by what we're against, not what we're for. And as a result, our kids aren't buying into our faith as we have been living it out for the last 30 years. 65% of American Christian kids that are raised in the church today stop attending church as soon as they graduate from high school. So we are literally losing a whole generation of kids. Uh, the church in North America is failing. And what we want to do, um, you know, because it's, it's not that we don't have the information. Because you go into any Christian bookstore, you know, you pick up any good study Bible, there is enough information in any of our good study Bibles to completely revolutionize the church. Sure. The problem is we're not reading them. You know, we might buy them. We might carry them around if we feel guilt about not having a Bible with us at church, but we're not reading them. And so I went and looked back at, at some of the stuff that Walt Disney did in the 50s and some of the stuff that Jim Henson did, you know, in the 70s in Sesame Street where they took educational content and made it fun for a whole family to enjoy it together. And that was the key because I can't go to a 40-year-old dad and say, you don't know your faith, so I need to teach it to you. Because number one, he's going to say, I grew up in church, I know all that stuff. Right. Number two, he's going to say, there's a football game on. Right. And so please leave. Yeah. <laughs> but if I go to the same guy, same 40-year-old dad, and say, I want to help you pass on your faith to your kids, mm -hmm. he's going to say, boy, do I need help with that because I have no idea how to do that. Yeah. So I feel that the key to really reteaching Christianity to the North American church is to target kids and parents will come along for the ride. And halfway through, if we do it with the same wit you know, that we brought to VeggieTales, dad's gonna lean over on the couch halfway through and say, you know, I don't even think I knew that. Yeah. And that's the key. So what's in the Bible is Sesame Street meets The Muppet Show meets Seminary. <laughs> okay. In a nutshell, it's walking kids all the way through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation over 13 DVDs okay. with songs, with humor that makes the teaching sticky. You know, because every Sunday in 350,000 churches across America, pastors get up and lecture. Even though scientifically we know that lecture is the least effective form of education known to man. It does not, you do not retain what has just been told to you, especially when it's never repeated. And pastors don't want to repeat a sermon because they think they'll get fired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know the preamble to the Constitution, not because I learned it in school, but because I learned it from Schoolhouse Rock right, on okay. Saturday morning cartoons, because they put it in the form of a song, which made it sticky, right. and then they repeated it. They, they aired it, you know, a couple times a week. And so I heard it over and over again. And to this day, I can give you the whole preamble to the Constitution. We need to do that with the concept of grace. Mm -hmm. We need to do that with the concept of redemption and salvation and all these big words that kids hear in grown-up church but no one ever defines. Yeah. So they don't even know what they mean. Uh, we need to bring kids' faith to life for them so they can defend their faith when they get to high school so they don't get it knocked out from under them you know, by one bad question from one cranky professor and walk away from the church. Wow. That's a, that's a uh, monumental task. Nah, you don't focus on the size. Yeah. You just it's obedience. Yeah. It's just you want me to try that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You say that because you and I were just kind of chatting before we started here, and we were talking about the songwriting process and the voices that you do. And one of the things I, I picked up that you, you basically were saying was, I don't do anything great. You said I, I can do a few voices. I can write a few short yeah. little lyrics and, and songs. But yet, yeah, it seems that you said, I'm going to take whatever God has given me and give it my best shot. And that's yeah. allow him to, to take it and bless it and, and do with it as, as he would. Yeah, there, there, I do so many different things in VeggieTales and in what's in the Bible. And I don't think I do any one of them exceptionally well enough to actually make a living okay. doing that one thing. But God has given me all of these you know, kind of high, moderately, not quite mediocre, just above mediocre abilities. And when I try to pour them all into a project altogether, something kind of special happens. Yeah. You know, and VeggieTales came out. So, it's, I mean, what, what I've been trying to do in the last few years is just say, okay, God, what gifts have you given me? 
and I want to try to create projects that use as many of them as I can. Yeah. You know, and stop trying to do things that I'm not gifted for, like managing staff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm working with all freelancers, okay. you know, which is awesome. They're all Christian you know, artists, animators, and, and, and uh, music producers. And I write, and I do all the stuff that I'm good at, and then I call them in when it's time. All right, I need this part animated. I need a song here, and I need this. And they do their part, and then we put it all together, and we get something magical. You know, it's just everyone is using what they're best at. Yeah. And then I, I'm kind of the conductor, and I understand enough about writing music, and enough about illustration, and enough about animation that I can give really good direction, even if I couldn't actually do it myself. Yeah. And that's you know, I realize that's why God gave me a little ability in a lot of areas so I can oversee the work of people that are much more gifted than I am. Yeah, that's awesome.